Paul, it's John Patar with Procyon Effects. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my kind of day-to-day uh, -day process that I use as audio lead for Last Epoch. So I head up audio at 11th Hour Games, and we're currently creating Last Epoch, which is in early access. Um, and yeah, today what we're going to do is just design some new assets and show the whole process from creating the assets, putting them in FMOD, which is our audio middleware that we use to manage our audio systems, and then integrating them into Unity, which is the game engine that, that Last Epoch is created in. So the sounds we're going to be working on today are for the time rifts in Last, Last Epoch. So it's a significant part of the narrative in Epoch is time travel. And so in the game, the the, the main player can stumble upon time rifts. The, the rifts will open, they can enter them, and then kind of be sucked into a wormhole and pop out at a different period of time. I'm not going to go too in-depth with the design process. I'm going to focus mostly on the integration and implementation process between FMOD and Unity. So yeah, I'm going to put these sounds together and we'll go from there. Okay, so we've put our sounds together. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly sort of show what we've got. So what I've put together for the event in the game. So we've got um, the sound for when the portal is actually sort of opened in the level. Cool, um, this is a loop I put together. Actually, I don't need them. Um, so the loop is, um, uh, just the sort of environmental sound that'll keep going as the portal remains in the level. It's not too complicated. Yep, so that'll just keep looping. Um, I've got the activate sound. So this is for when the, the player actually clicks on the portal. Yep. And the time warp or whatever you want to call it, um, is uh, just, just for when um, that visual comes up and the player's going through the kind of wormhole. Cool, all right, so they're the sounds that I've put together. Um, thankfully with this kind of event, um, because it doesn't happen, happen very often in the game, I don't need to make any sort of variations on it. I could if I wanted to, but because it's more of a cinematic event, it doesn't doesn't really need too much variation on it. Um, any variation um, I do put on it, whether it be pitch modulation or volume modulation or something like that, I can do within FMOD, um, but we'll get to that in a sec. So yeah, let's, um, let's get these sounds rendered. I'll just render them out. Um, as sort of separated audio files, but I, I, I'll explain in FMOD sort of how I rented them out and um, and why why I did it for the events that we're going to make. So yeah, let's get into FMOD. Alrighty, so now we've got our session open in FMOD. Uh, what we're going to do is kind of just go from start to finish, uh, create our FMOD events that we're going to use in the game engine, and I'll just kind of go over uh, what what we do and sort of why we're doing it as we go. So. Um, I've just created a folder here in my FMOD events um, tree. So I need to kind of think of like what events I need in the uh, for, for the event in the game. So like we've got the portal opens. So when it's activated, the portal, um, when it's looping, so there's another looping event, which is separate to the first one. Then there's a like an activation when the, the player clicks on it. Um, and then the, the wormhole event, which the, the last two can probably be combined into one, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So, so let's um, hop into our folder here. We'll make some 3D events. Uh, difference between 3D and 2D events is essentially a 3D event can uh, move around in a 3D space in the game engine, whereas a 2D event will just play dead center, left and right, um, without any panning. Um, right, so we've got our 3D event, so I'll just call it open. Um, and then we want, let's just call this similar thing. Loop. All right. So time rift open. We've got our audio file here, which is just the one shot that we made earlier. There we go. Yep, it works. Um, cool. So what we're going to do now um, is kind of just... Oh, I should mention the audio bin. So the audio bin is kind of just a 
a file explorer uh, within FMOD that allows you to uh, look through. So after you export your sounds, you you put them in the FMOD assets folder, and then rather than dealing with like the your computer's file explorer, you can get the audio bin, and that that way when you drag audio files, it won't um, it won't um, get confused with any file directories and stuff. So yeah, if you go up to your window, go audio bin. Uh, and then it'll allow, allow you to just drag and drop the sounds you need for whatever events you're, you're creating. So um, so yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust the size and attenuation of the sound in the game level, and I can use a 3D preview module here to do that. So um, probably turn it down a bit just for the example. So we've got our 3D panner down here. Um, this thing will allow us to um, sort of spa uh, place the, the sound in the world, um, sort of more accurately more accurately in how we want it to. So we can increase the sound size. So um, it'll just generally increase the size of the sound um, in relation to where the player is. And we can sort of make the minimum maximum distance to where the player will hear it. I'll just make it a bit, um, I'll, I'll make it a bit larger so that, so the player can actually hear the sound from like a lot further away because it's quite a, you know, I think I would notice if a portal exploded next to me. So. Um, Right, um, and so what we can do, we can preview it with this 3D preview. So that's dead center. Just say the sound's over here. Cool, hear it pretty clearly. How about further away? Yeah, what about over here? Cool, that's got some pretty cool coverage. Um, and then what I would do, is I'd probably change the instances so that this this like it won't really matter with this sound, but it'll just make sure that no more than four <laughs> it won't happen, but no more than four of these sounds are played at any one time. But I'll make the I'll make sure there's a cooldown of 60 seconds just in case. So what that does, the cooldown actually oh, 60 seconds, 60 milliseconds. So the cooldown allows you to so just just say for some reason six of these rifts opened at once. Wouldn't happen, but just say it did. Um it would only play one of the rift sounds because all six of these objects would trigger a rift sound effect. The cooldown allows it to to say, no, we're only playing one until after 60 milliseconds. Then after 60 milliseconds, if it triggers again, it'll play one. So um, it's just to help tidy up the, the mix in the game. So, all right, so pretty happy with that for now. We'll adjust levels as we get testing in game. Uh, now for the loop. So I'll get my audio bin back. Uh, what have we got? So we got, I, I bounced them out as two separate loops, the, the two audio files that I, I made. Um, so what I'm going to do here is create event instruments. So this is making, it's sort of like creating events within events, ev two events within an event. Um, and what I'm going to do, if you double click on that, it takes you to that, that um, nested event. I'm going to take this first loop that we made create a loop, make sure it's looping. Wonderful. That one loops, try the next one. Get this loop in here. Just take to the end. Cool, no one loops. Great, so both our things successfully loop. Uh, now I'm gonna create over those nested events and another loop region. So this will make sure that um, the loops within these nest of nested events are looping and then this looping event on top of that will loop those nested events. So one massive loop. Um, right, so what we wanna do, get rid of my audio bin. Uh, same deal. Let's um, change the sort of size and distance attenuation of the sound. Um, I don't want this one to be too, because it's a constant sound, I don't want it to be like massive. I just want it to be very environmental and kind of just, you know, as the player walks walks towards it or walks by it, you can, you can hear an obvious sort of looping sound. So probably turn it down. So 15. Cool. 
Cool, that'll do for now. So something I like to do with looping nested events um, like these ones is when you click on nested event, there's a setting called start offset down here. Um, so essentially what this does, um, like if I solo this first loop, I'll put the start offset to 65%. That means if you see the play head here, play head here, um, it starts 65% uh, down the timeline of the, 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 the nested audio in here. So what I'm gonna do, is in FMOD you can actually set up randomized modulation. So if I put random modulation to the start offset, and then I set this to 50%, the start offset is halfway down the audio timeline, but it's randomized, so it's essentially going to start anywhere on the timeline. So if I play this, started there, started there, started there, started down here, started down there, started there. So you get the idea. So if I do the same to the other audio loop, uh, modulation, random, start offset, 50. Cool. You can see the playheads are jumping around. They're playing, they're starting from different spots in the timeline. So what this is doing is just making it so every time the event is triggered, it's going to be a unique loop. Um, and this is, this is uh, great, especially if you have um, several instances of the um, audio in a level at once. Uh, lastly, what we're going to do is going to go to the master track, find the volume, um, put an envelope on the uh, master volume. So what this will do is that uh, rather than when it's triggering, uh, triggering the game engine, rather than having it um, just stop and start, um, cut to zero um, instantly, uh, what we can do is we can give it a fade in, a fade out, and just adjust the um, the, uh, the envelope however we want. So all I want is so considering that there's a huge explosion um, when the the portal is activated, um, it doesn't it needs it doesn't need like a, a super fast fade in. It can it can have a little bit of room to breathe because there's an explosion. And then if we give that explosion some space in the mix, then we can let this loop fade in. Um, so maybe I don't know two seconds. See how that sounds. Okay, that's good. And fade out probably the same really. Let's give it two. Wonderful. Uh, and maybe same thing. Let's change the instancing and the cooldown, blah, blah, blah. Actually, no, I might not do that because I think there can actually be more than one rifts more than one rift open in a level at once. So I'm going to not change the cooldown because if I did that, then when the when the um, the multiple rifts are spawned in level in the game, then that would cancel out a bunch of loops. So we don't want that. So yeah, so we'll leave the cooldown to zero because we we sometimes want multiple to be triggered at once. Um, but I will change. I will keep the instancing down to I don't know maybe ten just in case, <laughs> um, you know, you don't want a hundred loops um, going at once. Uh, right, cool, so that's our loop done. So, so far we've got our opening, then after that will come our loop. Then for the next one, I'm just gonna duplicate that. Uh, da, 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 delete that, that, that. Time rift. <clears throat> Uh, let's just call it enter because it's when the player enters the the actual rift. Let's get our audio bin back. All right now, so this is a couple of um, audio files we've got. These are just it's it's not um, um, yeah these ones aren't too crazy, but I'm just kind of going to I, I've 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 bounced them out into two separate audio sort of tracks so that I can just adjust levels um, within FMOD rather than relying on uh, baked in audio. So I'll just try and place it and see how it sounds. Let's solo that. Ah, because I duplicated it, it has a envelope on the master. I don't want that. It gives me a really long attack. <laughs> Cool, and then the second one. It's very loud. Ah, 
one thing I did wrong with this is because I duplicated it. It's actually a 3D event. We don't want that. Uh, the reason I don't want that is because it's like, you know, in the game, it, it, the um, the entire screen is covered by the visuals. So it's going to be a 2D event. Um, and like I said before, 2D just means it's not going to be uh, panning and moving around in the, in the world as we play. So I'm just going to delete the 3D panner and that'll just um, turn the sound into a 2D event. <clears throat> Cool. Um, all right. So there are our events. I think that's all we need. So uh, what I'm going to do for now is just assign these to our master bank. Um, I'll just assign them to master for now. But then, the, yeah. Um, so essentially, you need to assign them to your bank because then when you press F7 and build your banks, this is essentially creating the compressed um audio bank that unity uses to read all the changes you've made and all the fmod events you have in your session so um yeah once that finishes building then we can get into unity it'll import the fmod banks uh automatically and then we can get implementing so let's do that okay so we're in unity now and we're gonna actually implement the sounds we made so um what i've done is i've uh, i've just set up a little test environment where the player can just walk through a um a um a trigger volume sort of thing and it'll activate the time ref so we can test it um and so yeah let's just go step by step add in the sounds as we go so i've got the time rip time rift dropped in the level here um and i've added a play one shot component that's just a custom component that um our programmers made and it essentially just plays an f mod event of our choice when um whenever um the lifetime of this well, well the the whenever the time rift is enabled in the level so i'll just set that to our um event that we made so that'd be time rift open so that's when we made an f mod um and uh so now we need to make a looping sound now i had to do this one a little bit different um so on the time rift uh um component itself i added in the hierarchy a uh, just a blank um component and then i added a place sound while active um script which is another custom component from our programmers and this um, essentially will loop our environmental sound for the for the time riff. So I'll just add time riff there. So the way that's working is play sound while active does just as the name states. It'll play that selected F mod event for as long as the time rift is active in the level. What we also want though is for when the player clicks on the time rift, uh, we want the, the looping sound to stop. So um, the way I'm gonna do that is uh, on the time rift object in the same place where our uh, opening sound, effects is, sound effect is triggered, there's a deactivate game object on interaction script. So that's another custom component from our programmers. And so just as the name says, as soon as the player interacts with this object, it's going to deactivate whatever we assign to this, this space here. So I'm going to assign our portal loop sound component that we added earlier. So yeah, so as soon as that, it sets, that is interacted with, it's going to um, turn off our looping sound. Yeah, so finally we have our time travel VFX, which is like the visual effects that trigger um once the um once the time rift is interacted with um so what we're going to do is just grab the um the vfx object which is just here i've added a play one shot um when it's enabled components it's just saying the same same object as um for when the rift spawns in the level and we're going to add our our enter sound event so let's do that Time rift enter. Cool. And that should be it. So let's get in the level and give it a test. All right, so we're in our level. I'm gonna walk through the trigger and trigger the time rift.
Cool, that worked. So I think the environmental looping sound could actually use a bit of love, so I'm actually going to connect to Unity and sort of mix on the fly. So if I go down here and go live update off, um, then I can connect to the game. This will essentially just make it so that FMOD synchronizes with the game engine and I can change levels, change effects, change whatever I want. Um, so, yeah, I reckon we can turn up the looping sound effect. So, I'll just do it as an example, but you can see if I turn it up way too loud, you know, I can control the volume. Um, so what I'm going to do is maybe make it a, so I can hear it from a little bit further and increase the size. Let's have a look. See how that feels. Cool, I think it sounds pretty good. Now let's see what happens when we interact with it. Cool, it all worked. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, that was sort of front to back, you know, the um, design process, the FMOD event creation and implementation into into Unity. And then, yeah, then we tested it out in game and adjusted things as we went. So thanks to everyone for watching. Um, remember to like and subscribe and comment to let us know your thoughts and let us know what you want Pro Sound Effects to cover next. See you later.